Well, thanks, Sunshine, and thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Joanna Burkhart, and I am the general manager for Bike Chattanooga. Tonight, we are going to cover um, all things bike share from how to purchase an access pass from the kiosk all the way to the tricks of unlocking a bike without hurting yourself, just the ease of pulling it out without yanking too hard. So we're going to cover all those fun things. Um, but first, I think that we were going to do a little poll, right, Sunshine? Yes, and thank you for reminding me. <laughs> all right, guys, just to make sure you are paying attention and actually with us, we're going to pop a poll up on your screen. We want to know, have you used the Chattanooga Bike Share System before or not? So enter your vote. We just kind of want to gauge who we are speaking to this evening. All right, I'm gonna leave it up a few more seconds. I got 80% of you have voted. Some of us may be a little slower to click in than others. All right, hopefully you've done it. I'm about to close it. All right, what's your guess? More yeses or more, more no's, Joan? I'm gonna say more yeses. Oh, ah. okay, well this is perfect then. Perfect. All Great. Right. So saying. with that being said, I don't know where everybody's from, but it was pretty rainy here in Chattanooga. So I want to take everybody on a pre-recorded virtual bike ride before we get started. Everybody's feeling like a little bit better after all this rain with all that sunshine and our little virtual bike ride. Um, so I just want to go over our footprint. So Bike Chattanooga, when we officially launched in 2012, we had 30 stations. Um, now we have grown to 42 stations and 400 bicycles. The bicycles, um, there are 55 e-bikes that we just put into this system about a year and a half ago. Um, and with our stations, they're located all around downtown. You can see in the map there that they range from the North Shore to the South Side. They go all along the Riverwalk, um, all the way downtown. Downtown is very populated with them. They're literally about a block and a half away from each other. Um, and then just recently when we introduced the e-bikes to the system, we also introduced four charging stations. So the charging stations, um, there's one located in St. Elmo at the bottom of the incline. Also, there is one um, on North Market, which is by the Publix. There is one at Tatum Park, which is in Highland Park. And also the one in the middle of the city is right beside, uh, it's at the Shuttle Park. And it's right beside Mellow Mushroom. So anywhere, there's stations all around downtown. There's lots of bike lanes, protected bike lanes. 
there's the river walk, which is pretty, pretty heavily populated with lots of bikers too, because it's just a safe route to ride. Um, but there are stations all over the place. So when it comes to the access pass type, so we've got three different access pass types. Um, we've got our annual membership, which gives you access to the system for an entire year for $50. Um, and then we also have our short passes. So that would be our 24 hour access or our three day access. So you can see the prices right here. All the access pass types, they're exactly the same across the, across the board. They give you unlimited 60 minute station to station trips. So what that means is when you pick up a bike from one station, you have 60 minutes to ride it around and put it in another station um, before you get charged overage fees. It's very easy. Again, there's, sta there's stations all over the place. Um, so it's easy to be able to pick up that bike, take it for a spin, dock it. And then if you wanna keep riding, you just get a new passcode and then you can ride again. So I'm just gonna go through, I have a short video for you guys, just to kind of show you the rental process um, on how to get an access pass through the kiosk itself. Um, and there's some really great video that we got from Kat right here. So thanks Kat again for doing this. It was a nice- Whenever you go up to the kiosk, you've got two options. You can purchase a daily pass for $8 or a three day pass for $15. What these passes do is they give you access to the system for 24 hours and give you unlimited 60 minute station to station trips. So what that means is when you pick up the bike from a station, you've got 60 minutes to ride it around and dock it into another station. So to get a bike, you'll have to come to the kiosk, purchase, buy a pass. And then you can either purchase one or two bikes, but today we'll just do one bike. Uh, we'll do the eight dollars because we only want one day. And as you go through the rental process, it will have you look over the waiver and then accept the conditions of it. And then it will ask you to insert your credit card into the credit card reader. You push it in and pull it out. And it will read your card, validate it for you. It will put a one cent hold on your account that will be refunded after your 24 hours or your three day pass is over. Then it will ask for your phone number. For this instance, we will just put a fake one so nobody calls me. Then it will ask for your zip code that is associated with the credit card that you swiped. And then this is just going over the usage fee. So again, you get unlimited 60 minute, one hour station to station trips. Anything over that will get overage fees. So anything over an hour up to 30 minutes is $5. An additional 30 minutes is $5. So you have to accept that fee. All right, so this is just goes over your transaction, finalize it. It's subscribing you as a user. does that so now it goes through you're subscribed and you can either print your code or you can get your code right there so our code is 33313 you'll come over here to the dock itself you'll wait for that green light okay once you get that green light the easiest way to get the bike out of the dock is just to pull up on the back now you can ride for 60 minutes um, 59 minutes, go to another dock. You want to dock it. Wait for that green light because it says that you are your trip has ended. Then if you want to ride again, all you'll need to do is go back to the kiosk screen. Say, I have a pass. All you're going to do is you're going to insert that credit card that you originally paid with because that is essentially your key for your membership period. You will know that you already paid so you won't be charged again. You just need to get a new ride code. And then there's your new ride code. So again, you can either print it or remember it, take a photo of it, go back to your dock. You can get the same bike or another bike, doesn't matter. Put it 
So that just kind of gives you a good overview on how to do it, how to get a pass from the kiosk itself. Another way that if you want to purchase an access pass, you can use one of our apps. So if there's two apps, there's the PBSC app and there's also the transit app. The transit app um, is nice because it integrates the bus line, um, Uber, all kinds of things in the transit app. <coughs> the, with the PBSC app, the nice thing about that is you can see where your e-bikes are gonna be located. You can see where the e-stations are. Um, and then you can see where you're gonna pick up an e-bike. Because there's only 55 e-bikes, they're hot commodity. So a lot of people are riding around using the app just to be able to find them, to find the e-bike, to be able to take it. It works the same way. You'll put in all your information um, and then you'll get the five digit code and you'll put that information into the dock itself beside the bicycle to get the bike out. The pro tip here is, to lift up on the back of the bike, um, back of the seat to pull the bike out instead of having to just strain yourself to try to go by the handlebars. So here's the bikes. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we um, were so grateful to get some pedal assist bikes about a year and a half ago. They get about seven to one trips to them um, as opposed to our people powered bikes. They are super fun. Uh, they go fast, um, makes, life so much easier with all the hills that we have in Chattanooga. Um, and they're just, you know, just, they're just fun. Um, they, the E-Fit, which is kind of the smaller um, model of our pedal assist bike, it goes up to 20 miles per hour. So it does go fast, um, but it's, again, it's nice because it makes going up those hills very, very easy. The boost bike, uh, it, it doesn't go quite as fast. It's a little bit of a bigger frame to it. Uh, but it does still go 16 miles per hour and it still does help you go up those hills. Both of those bikes, they are pedal assist. So that what that means is that you still have to pedal, but it does give you that assist whenever you're going up those, those hills. Um, and then, you know, we've got our regular iconic bike, which um, are still fun. If you want that good workout or just to even get around town, um, they're still great to ride comfort style all you can ask for. They just don't have that ease of going up those hills like you have those pedal assist bikes too. Um, one unique thing that we have about our bikes here in Chattanooga is that we have a secondary lock on, on the front of our baskets. Um, and what that secondary lock does is that it's used for quick trips. So say you have to run into a coffee shop and get some coffee, but there's not a bike station there. Um, what you would do is you would use a secondary lock just to lock up your bike while you ran in, got your coffee and ran out. Uh, your 60 minute limit is still going when you use that secondary lock, but it is nice for that quick trip. So I have a nice video um, here next that will show you how to use the secondary lock. One of the unique features of a bike Chattanooga bicycle is its cable lock. This is great for short trips where you need to stop off real quick, where a station might not be convenient. To use this feature, Remove the cable from the basket, insert it into the lock cylinder. This will then release the key. Place the key back into the lock cylinder, twist it forward, and the cable will then release. Tuck the cable back into the basket and you're on your way. A closer view shows the tip of the cable being inserted into the lock cylinder. The key then moving to the release position, reinserting the key, twisting it forward, and then the cable lock releasing. Like All right, so that's how you can use the cable lock. Um, and then I think that we would like to do a poll here. Like, how do you ride? Um, if it's your personal bike or if it's a bike Chattanooga bike or if, if it's your future ride, how would you like to ride? Yeah, and I will uh, do that poll, Joanna. Do you mind um, maybe refreshing your screen if possible? The slides ended up blurry after that last video. How about that? Is that better? Still blurry. All right, here's the poll, guys. We want to know how do you ride and use the bike share system? And, and this is just either using your own personal bikes or using the bike share system. Um, but we would like to know how how you how you ride. 
Yeah, Joanne, I don't know. It's at least on my end. I haven't seen anyone complain in the chat, but um, for some reason, the words and the pictures are very pixelated on the, the presentation slide. And that happened after the last video. Um, okay, I've got 82% of the votes in. I'm gonna give you guys one more second. Yeah, a lot of people are saying they can't read the slides. I don't know how many more you have left. One of the unique right. features of a bike. Okay, hold on. Chattanooga bicycle. Wow, things are happening. I don't know. So while you're still figuring that out on your end, uh, <laughs> it looks like 70% of uh, the people that responded, you uh, ride a bike for recreation purposes, which is kind of what I figured. Exercise is pretty similar to that, but then the second part was exercise, transportation is third, and in my dreams, we did have 15% of people say that, which that was my favorite answer, so. Um, I, yes. I'll say one of my um, one of my favorite things about about bike share in general is that um, I have a lot of families that will load up their kids' bikes and bring them to downtown um, and hop on one of our bikes because it's so much easier to load up a kid's bike than to load up your personal bike to lug it downtown for the recreation part. So it's just that I, I always find it interesting to hear so many so many parents doing that which it makes complete sense um because there's bikes all over the place and you know it's just easy to put your kids bikes in the back and then run downtown and do it that way so as the recreational part of that yeah so yeah i'm joining i don't know how many more slides you have just one um, more is it still blurry it is but that's fine if you're on the last one i think we're okay yeah this is just a little quick review um, it's the last slide of all of them, just reviewing, um, that we have 400 bikes and 42 stations. Um, and then, you know, just the pro tip, if you want to find an e-bike, the best way to find one, to locate one is through the PBSC app. Um, you can purchase an annual membership online, um, through bikechattanooga.com or through one of the apps. And then casual memberships are purchased through the kiosk or for, for one of the apps. Um, the most important thing is just to remember you have unlimited 60 minute or one hour station to station trips included in your access pass and anything over that one hour trip to station to station trip does incur overage fees of five dollars per 30 minutes so just find another station within that 59 minutes dock it if you want to continue to ride just you know re-swipe your credit card or go through the app get another unlock code Get another, get another unlock code, ride again, and your 60 minutes starts over and you won't pay anything more than that um, access pass price that you purchased originally. So that's really all um, that I have about bike share. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them after everything is over um, through this. And then of course, may the fourth be with you and happy bike month. Yeah, thank you so much, Joanna. That was a great presentation. Um, and hopefully it answered a lot of questions about the bike share system. I know personally, working at Outdoor Chattanooga, having a station right outside our front door, I get questions all the time. How do I get a bike out? Where do I put my code? Um, so I think it's very helpful for a, kind of this overview for people to be able to access that a little easier. Um, those of you that join us late, yes, I will happily drop the sign-in sheet uh, in the chat for you. Thank you for asking. You apparently have been here before, and I appreciate that. All right. If you guys have any questions for Joanna about the bike share system specifically, please drop those in the Q&A. We will definitely answer those here in a little bit. But before we get to those, I want to turn it over to Kat Balzer. She's going to teach us how to bike on roadways, which is uh, unfortunate, we don't have just these awesome river walks that extend all over the place that make it safe to bike. Uh, we do sometimes have to ride our bikes in traffic. Um, and so Kat is going to teach us how to do that as uh, the bicycle pedestrian safety coordinator with the city of Collegedale and the advocacy person for Bike Walk Chattanooga. This is right up her alley. So Kat Balzer, with that, I'll let you take it away. All right. Um, oops, and I forgot to uh, go back to the beginning of my Take slide presentation. I'm sorry, guys. We'll just kind of.
Sorry, well, let's go back to the beginning. All right, so I like to precursor all of these workshops with we are really good at playing outside and at our jobs. We're not awesome with technology. So everyone have a little grace with us. Yeah. So um, hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Kat, and I am the bicycle and pedestrian coordinator. Um, I actually work for the College Dale Police Department, but um, my position serves all of Hamilton County and every county that touches Hamilton County. So all of that is really fancy government words for um, I teach people how to not get killed in traffic all day long, right? So um, a little bit about my background. Um, I am a League of American Bicyclists, uh, LCI, that stands for League Cycling Instructor. Um, but I am also a, a PMBI Level 1, which is a professional mountain bike instructor. Um, and I'm, the reason I'm telling you both of those is because I actually kind of like to blend the two, especially when riding around town. Um, when riding around town, if any of y'all are kind of used to that, um, Conditions change frequently. Um, the only change is, or the only constant is change, right? So hopefully today, if you could walk away with any kind of knowledge, it's just to kind of be able to predict the unpredictable and, you know, how things change on the streets in Chattanooga. So um, the League of American Bicyclists wants you to kind of remember four things when you're riding in traffic. They want you to be visible, predictable, alert, and assertive. So the League of American Bicyclists tells you these four things, right? And then they also tell you kind of some five basic traffic safety principles, which is not even in my presentation, to be honest with you, because four and five is nine. That's nine things to remember. That's a lot to remember. We're not going to do that, okay? If you only remember two things today, if you only take away two things from this presentation, it's C and B seen. That's what we're all about right here when riding in traffic, see and be seen. So what exactly does that mean? So see, you wanna be a seer, you wanna be Miss Cleo, right? You wanna be predictable, alert, and assertive. So being predictable is communicating with drivers, using your hand signals, also eye contact with drivers, um, generally speaking, obeying traffic laws and acting like a car, um, bicyclists, they are better when they act as vehicles in traffic. So don't run red lights, um, ride in the middle of the lane, things like that. Um, as best as you can, try to predict the unpredictable. That's all about planning, adapted, adapting and unplanning again, right? So when you're riding downtown, there's gonna be a lot of traffic. There's gonna be construction. There's gonna be things that change on the streets from day to day. So have a plan to know where you're going and then just be prepared to adapt that plan. That's gonna happen, okay? So that's the be seen or that's the seeing part, okay? Now, we also want to be seen. We want to be visible, okay? Maybe not so much like this guy, okay? We want to actually wear clothes. And the things we want to wear, we want to wear bright, reflective clothes. Um, any type of bright green, bright yellow, bright pink, anything like that. Uh, blinky lights. I'm big on blinky lights. You should have a white one in the front. You should have a red one in the rear. Um, any type of reflectors or reflective tape, having reflectors is actually the law here in Tennessee. Um, and then, of course, you can be seen by your behavior, um, taking the lane, actually riding in the middle of the lane, uh, position according to destination and speed. If you're going to be taking the left, you want to be in that left third of the lane. Um, and then just signaling, right? So, all that being said, let's kind of put it together and pretend like we're going to go on a bike ride, okay? So the first thing before we ride our bikes is we got to wear a helmet, okay? In the great state of Tennessee, if you're under 16 years of age, it's actually the law. Now, I'm assuming most people on this uh, webinar are not under 16, but even if you're an adult, we all know concussions happen. Let's try to save our brain and let's be... Um, just good stewards and good examples for the younger kids, okay? And then the next thing, once you get your helmet on, you want to go through an ABC quick check, all right? So those are all things on your bike you want to check to make sure they're in good working order before you ride. A is air, B is brakes, C is chain, crank, and cassette. And then you want to 
check your quick releases, make sure they're in the closed position. That's usually going to be on your wheels and your seat post. And then you just want to check it all over, make sure everything is in good working order. Anything kind of clunking is probably going to cause you problems later. So just be mindful of that. And then, of course, things you might want to take with you, lights, uh, snacks, jacket, things like that. And then again, just know where you're going, be seen and be a seer. So all that being said, let's get ready to ride. All right. Here is my best, uh, best stab at trying to educate you in a virtual setting by actually taking you on a bike ride. OK, so this is what riding around Chattanooga looks like. OK. We'll just kind of see what happens when we go along this route and I'll try to talk you through it and see what I do on a normal daily basis and how I can just walk you through and try to be predictable and try to predict the unpredictable. All right, so this is what it looks like. I'm taking a ride on the main. So this little section of main actually has a bike lane. It will end very, very shortly at main and broad, but I'm gonna use it while I got it, all right? So we got some railroad tracks coming up here. I'm already at a perpendicular angle, but I like to just stand up in that ready position. Big bumps on this one. That's so it doesn't hurt my rear end too. So my bike lane is already ended, but it drops me into a lane where I can go ahead and continue straight on main. So that's what we're gonna do. We got a red light right here. Sometimes at red lights, I like to practice my track stands. Not too great at it. But while I wait for this light to turn green, I'm going to go ahead and have my power pedal position ready. That's going to be my dominant foot. Whatever my dominant foot is, it's going to be my right one personally. I'm going to bring that pedal to about a two o'clock position. That's all the way up and a little forward. That way when that light turns green, I can stomp down really hard on that pedal. And that's going to be the quickest, fastest way to get my bike going. And we're green. So here on Maine, we're getting into a little bit busier part of Maine. Maine's got some sharrows on it, which in my opinion is one of the more dangerous ways. So me personally, I like to kind of take the lane as much as I can on Maine. That way I avoid car doors. I avoid this guy that just pulled out right here. Since I'm taking the plane a little bit more, maybe he saw me. I don't know.
this particular section of road does not have a protective bike lane, but we're about to enter the protective bike lane. So I'm going to continue this video in just a second, but I'm going to turn the camera around. Y'all have been looking at me the whole time. I'm going to turn it around so you guys can see what I see. There will be a quiz, okay? So just pay attention. I'm going to do two runs down Broad Street. Just pay attention, okay? All right, we've entered the protected bike lane, but I think there's a lot of activity downtown today. So I'm going to switch it around so you guys can see what I can see. We'll just kind of see what we happen. All right, pop quiz now, Sunshine. Help me out. Yes, absolutely. Uh, sorry, I started laughing at one of those one of those <laughs> parts. All right, here comes the quiz, y'all. Hopefully, you were paying attention. When Cat turned the camera around, what did you see? Be honest and check all that apply. It is multiple choice, so you guys should be able to click several options. If you can't, I apologize. I set it up wrong. All right, who's paying attention and who wants to vote? Yeah, there was a lot happening downtown that day, Kat. Yeah, it was a it was a big day. We got a we got a new mayor in town that day. There's a lot <laughs> of activity. Uh, Stephen Trumpe, I think that's how you say his last name, made a comment in the chat that your your bike looks very cozy. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, we got about 64% of you, 70% of you. All right, don't be sleeping on us, y'all. This proves we're actually engaging enough that you haven't stepped away from your computers and started making dinner or started drinking or any of those things on a, <laughs> a Tuesday night. All right, I got 82%. I'm going to call it that. Let's share the results. How did they do, Kat? How did they do? I just want to say, all right, everyone saw the trash can, right? So I'm assuming you at least saw the trash can on the second run down broad. The first run down broad, it's over there on the side. It clearly moved into the way. Everyone saw the, most everyone saw the woman exercising in the bike lane. That's great. <laughs> you probably should have seen the potholes. I yelled it out, big bumps. I'm, I'm just so happy somebody else saw Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> Grumbling on the side, yes. The things you see downtown, a lot of motorcycles. No one, not many people saw the motorcycles, huh? All right, all right. But yeah, if you, um, like Sunshine said, this is being recorded. This will be on YouTube later and everything. Um, you can go back and kind of review that and just, just see what you see. That's all that is, all right? If you look far to the left of the video, you will see about mm, at least a dozen um, Chattanooga police, 
police officers and their motorcycles in the bike lane on the other side. A lot of you probably at least saw a couple of the police officers that were there um, towards the end that were closer to the intersection. But <clears throat> anyways, the whole point of that exercise was to just kind of take you on a bike ride, show you kind of what I do on a daily basis, how I can be seen, and then show you what I see and how you can just kind of try your very best to predict the unpredictable out there, all right? Um, and again, this um, still all pretty new to uh, educating people online about this stuff, but um, here is a list of writing resources. I know everything I just kind of went over is kind of throwing at you real quick, drinking from a fire hose. But um, if you want to go back and review any type of bike safety stuff, uh, League of American Bicyclists has some great resources. Um, Enjoy the Ride is one of their videos that uh, we can drop a link to. Um, I show that almost before every class that I teach. Um, and also, if you are a local, just kind of some local riding resources. Um, the Chattanooga Bicycle Club um, does a great job of kind of managing their calendar of bike rides on their website. They have tons and tons of rides weekly and monthly. Uh, right now is a big bike season, so there's probably a bike ride with uh, CBC almost every day. Um, again, Bikeways of the Scenic South, that is a fantastic website by uh, Jim Johnson and Shannon Burke. Um, both of those guys run kind of their own bike tour companies and are big advocates in the area. And um, they'll just kind of, you can download some routes online and everything. And then of course, without speaking or without saying, Outdoor Chattanooga has a fantastic bike resource page. Um, Brought to you by Sunshine Loveless. She's put all sorts of links on there to all the clubs in town, a lot of routes in town, a lot of events, all the bike shops, everything that you can dream of about biking here in our scenic city. Yes, thank you so much, Kat. That was super informative. Uh, I loved the virtual bike ride. That is the best way to reach people virtually and try to show them what it's like to cycle in the road. Uh, in our city streets. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, for those that are interested in an in-person offering, uh, Outdoor Chattanooga will be hosting a Bike Commuting 101 class on May 11th. It is completely free. It'll take up another hour of your time and we will actually take you on a group ride uh, and teach you all the hand signals um, and uh, how to drive your bike in traffic. Um, and thanks for the shout out as well, Kat. I appreciate that. I have dropped all of those links into the chat function. For those that are asking, you will get a follow-up email. Uh, like Kat said, drinking from a fire hose, we are throwing a lot, a lot of information at you really quickly. So don't worry. It's all going to come to you uh, in a written form in an email uh, since you showed up tonight. So all these links, all these resources, we'll get them to you, okay? Uh, let's go to the Q&A. Are you ladies ready to be stumped by our participants? Yes. 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 <laughs> let's do it. All right. Um, some, uh, some of them that I got from the chat. Um, how long does it take to charge a bike, an e-bike, um, Joanna? So from dead, let's just say 0% to fully charged, it's about four hours. Okay. Um, and then there was a question about, will Chattanooga be adding more bike lanes? And I kind of answered that in the chat, but for those of you that don't, uh, haven't checked that, um, the regional uh, planning agency is working on their transportation plan um, and they are planning for 2050 and they are seeking feedback from pedestrians and cyclists specifically. They focus on three areas uh, in, like inner city, regional, um, as well as further out. I am not an expert, but I did go fill out the survey because I do bike to work. Um, I do walk around downtown. And so um, I dropped that also in the chat and I can share that in the email as well. But um, with the new administration coming in, who knows what shifts and changes are gonna happen, but there is usually planning for more bike lanes and more bike infrastructure in our future to answer that question. All right. Keith wants to know, you may be answering this, but I would like to hear about using the annual pass with an iPhone. So I wouldn't have to have my tag with me. So 
Right. So you can access that through one of the apps. So the transit app or the PBSC app, basically download the app. You'll log into those apps the same way that you would log into your account um, on the website. Once you log in, uh, the easiest way, all you would say is get a, get a code or buy a pass. It'll already know that you're an annual member as long as you log in with the same um, information that you would normally on the website. You'll just get that five digit code and unlock the bike directly from the dock. So if you did forget your key card or your, you know, your member key, the easiest way to do it is just to go through the app, log into your account, get a pass, get that five digit code and unlock a bike at the dock. Perfect. And I did drop the app um, link um, into the chat and, and in that question that was just answered. And that'll come in the email as well, guys. And it does differ between Android and iPhone. So that's why I can't just send uh, directing you to Bike Chattanooga's website to figure out which app is best for the type of phone you have. Chris would like to know, are there any future expansion plans for the bike share system? Currently, we are we do not have any plans. Of course, we're always looking for grant funds to be able to expand into other neighborhoods. Um, we've got some ideas of where we want to go, uh, but currently we do not have any funding at the moment. We're always looking. So hopefully um, with 2021 and the successful year that we're having so far, um, we hope to do that within the next year or so. It's, a, it, you know, basically it comes down to funding. Yeah. Chris, give us all your money and we'll do it. <laughs> all right. Tracy would like to know, how does the annual pass work? And that may have been answered in your presentation, but just a quick uh, recap there, Joanna, how does the yeah. annual pass work? Yeah, no problem. Um, it works the same as all your other access passes. The difference with your annual membership is that you get a member key. Um, you pay $50 for a membership that lasts the entire year. Uh, you can either unlock the bike with the member key or you can use the app to get that five digit code. So same thing, unlimited one hour station to station trips. Are there extra fees for e-bikes? Renaud would like to know. There are not extra fees for e-bikes. Um, they are the it's the same across the board for pedal assist and people powered bikes. Yeah. So as long as you're lucky enough to find one or not, you can cruise away on an e-bike. That's right. So we have Sheila coming all the way from Manila, Philippines. And she would like to know if there are any instances of your e-bikes being stolen by a renter. Uh, they are, but there are GPS units in them. So we are able to track them down. Um, you know, I think every city has some bikes go missing every once in a while, but the of course, we're, we're grateful to have some GPS units in them to be able to find them and locate them. Yeah. And thanks for joining us super early, Sheila. I appreciate that. It's, it's 7 a.m. where she is. So oh, uh, wow. yeah, reach, Good morning. Reach your, yes. And hopefully you'll come to Chattanooga someday and be able to ride one of these bicycles. Um, Greg would like to know, can you provide a link or the name of the app again? I didn't catch it. Yes, Greg, I will drop it in your question one more time. And again, it'll be in the email we send out. Um, somebody else would like to know, how do you know which bikes are the e-bikes? Are they labeled? Uh, so the e-bikes, they have basically um, a battery indicator on the stem cap. So you can tell how much battery is lit up by pushing that button. Um, they're a little bit bigger. The down tube is thicker for where the battery goes into it. Um, and then there are, we have lime green ones, which the lime green ones are different from our regular blue color. Um, and the fenders have this really crazy swirly design on them. But the easiest way to figure out if it's an e-bike or not, if it's got a battery indicator in the middle of the handlebars. Yeah, they do, once, once you get used to it, they do kind of stick out. I know I eyeballing them when I'm using the bike share system. Like, is that, is that? Okay, I'm gonna go swap this one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tracy would like to know, are there beginning riding classes? Um, Tracy, I, I guess re-enter your question. Are you talking about like, never have I ever been on a bicycle and I need to learn how to ride a bicycle? Or are there beginning classes for how to ride a bike in traffic? Um, there, Outdoor Chattanooga actually offers both. We have free learn to ride a bike classes and free bike commuting 101 classes. Um, so if you're interested in those, outdoorchattanooga.com and programs is what you'll be looking for. Um, but if you want, uh, to specify in your question, I can answer that a little better. 
Um, Arden would like to know why the every 60 minute required return? That seems like too little time to me and that one requirement has kept me from actually using the bike share system. So if you look, most bike share systems are used to, as the last mile. So get on a bus, get off the bus, use it to get to your workplace, right? Um, Chattanooga is actually one of the only cities with bike share that has the 60 minute um, station to station trip limit because it's used more for recreation rather than transportation. If you think about it, if everybody got a bicycle out, some of our day, our busiest days, we've had over a thousand trips. Say the majority of those people take the bike out for 24 hours, then nobody else gets to ride it again. So the idea is to get the bicycle, ride it, you know, at 59 minutes, dock it, go eat, do what you need to do, get another bike, and then you can ride again. They call it a bike sharing system. So we share with each other when we're not using the bikes. Most people aren't gonna be riding the bikes for 24 hours the entire period. So it encourages people to put the dock, put the bike back into the dock so other people can use it. Um, so yeah, essentially it's just, for us, it's more about recreation, but it's also, it's a way to encourage people to dock the bike so others can use it while they're not using it. Arden said, thank you. He never knew that and that explanation made, made perfect sense. Okay. Yeah, and so, I, yeah, I've literally watched them move bikes around Arden, um, around the city. So when big events are happening like Riverbend and they think, oh, a mass group of people are gonna show up at this time, probably at this location to rent all our bikes, we gotta be ready. So it is just a way to monitor where they are around town and make sure we're keeping customers happy, right? Kat, if you're available and Heath isn't bugging you in the background, we got a question for you. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Uh, hello, Kat, does the city have a bike law? Does your city have a bike law is what Sheila says. Um, so, our bike laws really go by the state. So go by the state of Tennessee. Um, there are a few city ordinances. Um, so the big question that I get asked is, can you ride a bicycle on the sidewalk in Chattanooga? And you can. There is no city ordinance saying that you can't. And there's no state law saying that you can't. Um, for the most part, though, Chattanooga and the city ordinance that we have, um, it basically follows the law of Tennessee. Um, and the basic laws are that bikes should be riding in the road and should act as traffic. So I hope, I hope that answers your question. But um, bicycles are allowed on sidewalks. There's no law against them. But you have a better chance of being seen if you are taking the lane and you are in traffic. One of the big dangers with riding on the sidewalk is um, that section that we call the driveway apron, where the traffic can enter and exit the road. You're, it's hard for drivers to see you on the sidewalk when they're entering and exiting the road right there. Perfect. Um, Jay Rawl would like to know um, if there would be a charging station between Rembrandt's and the Boathouse. Will there be any added in that area, Joanna? Um, well, again, it all, it all comes down to funding to put more bike stations and even converting our old stations into E stations. I mean, the components that go into the stations that we have now compared to the electric stations are completely different. So. We would love to make all of them e-stations. Trust me, it would make our lives so much easier than running around and putting bikes in only four stations. But um, I, I think moving forward, when we do expand and add more bikes and stations to the, the system itself, they're all gonna be e-stations. That's the goal. And so I think that answers his second question about having more e-bikes and stations. Uh, yep. at the foot of Lookout Mountain. So, yep, that, that kind of answers both of your questions there, Jarrell. And that wraps us up with the Q&A portion, um, unless anyone has another one they want to squeeze in at the last second. We so appreciate you guys being with us this evening. Um, I, I can't thank you all enough for finding these workshops, signing up for these workshops, and actually sitting through them. Uh, hopefully, you find them engaging. We would love your feedback. I just dropped a survey link in the chat. If you have a moment right after this, fill that out real quick. Um, it'll also come in the email, follow-up email we're about to send out to everybody um, with all the resources, all the slide decks, the recorded video, anything you could want out of this tonight will be included in that email. 
Plus you'll have my contact info so you can follow up with any questions. I could put you in touch with Joanna or with Kat if it's specific to them. Um, if not, I try to be a, a wealth of knowledge at, <laughs> on certain topics. So um, Joanna, thank you so much for your time and expertise this evening about the bike share system. And Kat, thank you for your time and expertise about how to drive our bikes in traffic. Um, with that, I think we will, we will say good night to everybody. Thank you all for being here. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Check out outdoorchattanooga.com. Go follow us, like, subscribe, do all those things. Same with the bike share and same with Kat. Do you have social media you want people to follow? <laughs> find Kat, the bike lady. Find Kat, the bike lady. Don't find me. <laughs> you can email me you can call me social media there's usually just you know things of that little kid so <laughs> yeah all right guys thank you so much everyone Thanks, have a good guys. night bye yeah